Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you don't know already, my name is Adia Jane Watts and today I will be reacting to all of my pageant videos that I have saved on file on hand. Right now, I currently hold the title of Queen Beauty South Carolina 2020 in the Queen Beauty USA system. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, this is the crown for the Queen Beauty South Carolina system. Let's start from the beginning. This way this video can be semi and about me slash my pageant history. Let's start from the beginning. I got into pageantry around the age of 14, 15. I was always interested in it. I always kind of just watched the Miss America pageants when they came to town on NBC or ABC back when I was a kid. I never really, really bothered. That all changed in about 2008. I was eight years old and my sister and I, we were with our grandmother one day. She lived right around the corner from the Brandywine Zoo in Wilmington, Delaware. Miss Delaware, either Miss Delaware 2008 for the Miss America system or a local title holder for the Miss America system was visiting the Brandywine Zoo that day. We actually ended up meeting her and she let us try on her crown and she gave us signed autographs. I wish I still had the signed autographs from that day, but unfortunately I don't and that's the one thing that sucks the most. I think that kind of made me realize, oh my God, like princesses are real. <laughs> And actually, I'd ask my grandmother, wow, like, so I could really be a princess one day. And she's like, yeah, you could really be a princess one day if you try your hardest. As a kid, I was very tall and very lanky. I think I was, I was nine, five foot nine, wearing a nine size shoe. I kind of put pageants on the back burner. We moved to New Jersey. Pageants just kind of fell to the wayside. I just was adjusting to this new life in a new state, a larger state, closer to New York. Freshman year of high school, it kind of just popped right back up. I was just researching some things. I had decided that I wanted to get back into modeling. So I had contacted Barbizon schools for modeling and acting. I had left them a couple of uh, voicemails. I'd kind of done some research on that. And then after a while, I got this one email on my school iPad and it said something on the lines of, enter this pageant. It didn't have a name and the font was very sketchy. It was like, I don't even know what kind, it was like newspaper font from like the 40s. Like, no, not newspaper font, typewriter font from like the 40s. It was very sketchy. It was in blue and green and red font colors. And I don't know about you. And there was no images. And it was apparently their first year pageant. I was just like, okay, cool. Like, can you tell me more information? They gave me, they said that the entry fee was $500. They said that it would be airing on Oxygen TV for their first show. And they said that I could get sponsors like Pepsi, Coca-Cola, Subway. And they were like, yeah, just walk into your local Subway and ask if you could talk to like the CEO. And I was like, Subway is not gonna sponsor a little, little old me, 15 year old me, from Asbury Park, New Jersey. They, they do not care about me. Coca-Cola, Pepsi, if Subway doesn't care, they, oh my God, they're definitely not gonna care. So once they said that, I, I talked to my mom about it. We both came to the decision that no, this pageant's not real, but it led me down the rabbit hole. I remember before this time, thinking that pageantry was like this elusive thing. It was like a cult thing <laughs> and you could only get into it if you knew someone. That's that's literally how I thought because I just never had seen a pageant advertised online. I found the Miss New Jersey Teen USA website. One of the prizes was a modeling contract with Trump management. Of course, this is 2014, 2015. This is before Donald Trump said what he said about uh, Mexicans, which I definitely disagree with. And that's when I started doing my research on the Miss Universe system. I had always watched Miss America and I'd always watched Miss USA as a kid. Now it was tangible. Like I have my hands, I can actually see the physical website. At the time, Miss New Jersey Teen USA was Valentina Sanchez and she lived in my she lived in my town. So like she lived in my town and that was absolutely insane. Through a little bit of sleuthing because if you look at the Miss New Jersey USA website and I'll put it here, you can see that all of the information for contestants is password locked. But I have always been a little hacker <laughs> and so I ended up finding a PDF file of 
the Florida sponsorship packet for Miss Florida USA and Miss Florida Team USA for that year, or for the year prior being 2013. I found out through Florida that the sponsorship fee was $13.50, something like that. I was just like, well, if Florida is $13.50, New Jersey is definitely among the same price range. So I talked to my mom about it. Mom, okay, so I know you said no to that other pageant, but this pageant is $13.50 maybe less maybe more at the same time because in that same packet they had given a list of sponsors you could reach out to so i was like but i could reach out to like my local dry cleaner my car wash my my everything she was just like okay yeah sure let's give it a chance but i wanted to wait i don't remember what really was the driving factor behind me waiting that year i'm inside 2020 i wish i hadn't waited i think it was just the pressure of oh my god i have to raise over a thousand dollars and i don't believe i had my first job at that time yet so it was just like you know what let me just give it a minute give it a second sit on it Thank God. I waited a year. Jacqueline Giancola won Miss New Jersey Teen USA. March, March of 2015, I was just like, you know what, mom? Remember that thing I said about pageants last year? Let's do it again. In January, I was constantly refreshing the Miss New Jersey Teen USA page, clicking every single day. And like I said, I went to St. Rose High School. So they gave us school iPads. Every day in class, I'm just constantly clicking that refresh button because I was waiting for new information about that year's pageant to come out. January passed, came and went. February came and went, March came and went. And I'm just sitting here like, yo, if the pageant's supposed to take place in October, when are they gonna refresh their page? <laughs> I was like, it's such, I was so scared. Cause I'm just like, did I miss it? Like, is it still the cult that I think it is? Like what's going on? April, around April, I refreshed the page and there it was. Everything popped up. The second I could, I turned in my application. A couple weeks later, I got my packets in the mail that said, congratulations on being a contestant for Miss New Jersey Teen USA. And that's where it all began, that April. I started going business to business after school. School got out at 2.30 and my mom often wouldn't come to pick me up from school till four o'clock. If I didn't have any clubs, right to go into business to business. And it started slowly. It would be $5 here, a dollar there, and then I had this idea because I was working with Miss Jan Sparrow, who was the owner of Words Bookstore, now the Asbury Park Collective. And she said, well, one, we can hold a silent auction, which we did. And two, I can get you in touch with William Salcedo and we'll see what he could do. William Salcedo is the executive director of the Big Brothers Big Sisters program here in Monmouth County. This man, what he did for me changed my life. I will say that with the utmost certainty because he then got me in contact with a Miss Carol Stowell. Oh my God, I could literally speak for eons and eons and eons about these ama these three amazing people. If they weren't there for me in the beginning, I don't know where I'd be now. I don't know if I would have successfully been able to compete in that first pageant. With the silent auction that Miss Jan was gonna put onto me at Words and with William Salcedo introducing me to Carol Stowell, everything just kind of started to click into place over the summer. Instead of asking businesses for money, I ended up asking them for things that they could donate for the silent auction. And then Miss Stillwell, I don't want to really expose her. I don't want to say expose, but tell the whole story. But she ended up being one of the biggest sponsors I've had to date. I am still very much grateful for her. She ended up taking me to my first dress store and dress shopping, and she helped me to find my dress. She was there every step of the way, her and her assistant Robin, and I cannot thank them enough for all the work that they did for me then, because they really did did take like a young 16 year old me and like they helped her to blossom into the person I am today. I believe I raised enough to get my sponsorship be covered with the silent auction. Miss Stilla ended up helping me pay for her headshots. So my first round of headshots was with Jessalyn Palumbo uh, in July of 2016. Funniest thing happened when I was shooting with Jessalyn and Angelica. I w wasn't big on research then, as big on research than I, as I am now, but I had known that Jessie had competed almost eight times before that for the title. I had no idea idea she was even involved in pageantry at all besides being a pageantry photographer. Basically that session, she told me like, yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna compete for Mr. Jersey USA this year. And I was like, go for it. Like, why not? And she was just like, well, I've competed so many times and I'm just like, you never know, like this time could be like your lucky charm. And she ended up giving me this beautiful headshot. It's a great headshot for a first pageant. And um, I look so young there. Like, that's so weird. I look, I look so young. That's so creepy. Oh, <laughs> 
fast forward a couple more months and we're here we're here mr jersey teen usa was at the helton persephone all right so first we're gonna react to a video of me before finals i believe good morning everyone so i didn't really film as much as i thought i was yesterday tonight is first of all can we talk about how my glasses are crooked my glasses have always been crooked let's talk about this hair um you can't really see it here but this hair oh my god you guys my hair for my first pageant was awful i wasn't experienced in weaves i had only gotten about a three or four before this it was my first time getting a closure and no hate or no tea or no shade to the hair artist that did my hair i don't remember who she is it did not look like my real hair and the way she had the closure like my forehead went from like my normal five head to like a six head <laughs> Like it literally pulled back that much. I wasn't smart enough to know that you should get like a sew-in done like three to four days before a pageant. So that way it gives it time to like settle. No, I got it done Thursday and I left on Friday. I don't remember. But you can even see on the sideburns there. Like she literally braided my sideburns like so hard that like no, no. So let's, let's, <laughs> that was not a good look. Let's see what else I have to say. Finals. Dirty Shore! Yes. So tonight's final. And I like went to bed and I was freaking out about it. What is this angle? Like this angle? <laughs> I've always had an interest in creating YouTube videos, but this would not have made any YouTube this is making this YouTube video, but like, oh my god. And now my heart's like do, 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 do. Because it's finals and I don't want it to be finals. So we'll see how I do. That's true. Anytime we compete, anytime I compete at a pageant, when it's finals night, especially now after competing at like week long pageants, when you're at a weekend pageant and it's finals night, you're like, where did the time go? It sucks. It really does suck. All right, that was a quick little video. Let's go to the prelims. <laughs> Warning, so my dad has this thing where he'll scream, Deja, you wanna do it with me? One, two, three. Dia! The whole video. <laughs> so, I'm sorry for your ears. <laughs> So it's so funny because if you see me here, I have no idea what to do. I'm like, are we clapping? And I had walked up like I had held my gown up the entire way because I did not get walking lessons in this gown. And this is the one gown I need to walk lessons in the most. I've not worn a mermaid gown since this gown. If you look at my hair though, right there, it's so bad. It's so stringy. This is the other reason why my weaves or that weave, that sewing was not the best because the hairstylist that they gave me at the pageant. So this was the only Miss New Jersey Teen USA since I competed, started competing in the USA system that I got my hair and makeup professionally done. That's so there's a reason for that. Not that I don't trust who they give as the makeup artist, but I just know like I'm just scarred from my first pageant experience i'd rather take that into my own hands and if they had something where like i could just get hair or makeup i definitely i would definitely get my hair done by them you know because i always have a pro problem with my hair every single year it never fails but this this time when i when they did my hair my last name starts with a w right they normally do hair and makeup in alphabetical order because the girls who go on stage first are the girls whose last names start with a b c d your last team starts with an A, you're gonna make up at six, seven in the morning when the show doesn't start till one, two in the afternoon. So my last team starts with a W, which means that if the show started at five, I was going for her to make up at 4.30, not, not 4.30, 4 o'clock, 3.30, 4 o'clock. So the girls who were A, B, C, D, they had their curls set all day. Girls who were, let's say S through Z, they've had their curls set for like an hour max. <laughs> so these curls, fell by the end before I even got on stage. 
And that's why I don't get my hair and makeup done. Again, it's not that they're not capable of doing hair and makeup. In fact, I love CIA artists and I wish I could get my hair and makeup done by them. But just the simple fact that my last name ends in a W, that's just a risk I can't take. My nap, like if I were to compete with my natural hair, it would hold the curls. Like I talked about in my last video, short hair is just a look that Jersey's not going for. Thereby, I have to wear hair extensions. Thereby, their curls wouldn't hold as long as I need them to for it to look good. That's why I just prefer to do my own hair and makeup. All right, back to the video. Did you guys see that? So right there, I literally... <laughs> I have no idea where to go. I'm just, I'm six foot, six, five eleven at this point. Nowhere to go. My last name's again W. The way they have us come out is by last, by number, which is by last name. I'm smack dab in the middle front and they told us not to stand in the middle. I remember that year they told us not to stand in the middle, but girls started to stand in the middle anyway because they didn't want to cover up the band. Literally, I took that right side step and I'm like, where do I go? What do I do? I'm covering up all the girls behind me. I felt so bad. <laughs> And I'm literally, I'm literally on my own line. I'm on my own line, <laughs> covering up all the short girls behind me. I'm so sorry if I covered you up that year. So I want to apologize if, not just if I've covered you up on my first year, but if I have covered you up at any point throughout my pageant career, I genuinely have no control over it. I'm literally six foot two in six inch heels. <laughs> I don't need to be mean if I cover you up with my excessively large shadow. Please don't take it to heart. I'm not trying to be like, oh yeah, let me try and cover up all of the other girl. No, it's not like that. In fact, on the inside, I'm cringing more than you know. <laughs> Even one of the girls, she's like taps my shoulder and she's like, she's like, come over here, hurry. Cause she sees that I'm literally on my own line. Like, I, and I really, I always wonder, and I'll tell you the story as the video goes along, but I always wonder if the actions I took on my first pageant experience are what have stopped me from placing <laughs> throughout my career. I'll go into the story a bit later. <laughs> Hearing Jim Donovan's voice makes me so sad. I miss him so much. Jim Donovan and Lynn Morehouse need to come back. <laughs> I know your contracts are ended and you guys worked for 20 years with the organization. Go back to us. It's so funny. Here, I'm just standing there and I'm like, bro, what do I do with myself? I'm still clapping to the beat of the music, so I have no idea what to do with myself. All right, so now we're at the evening gown competition because my dad doesn't know how to edit videos and he edited everything backwards. Actually, swimsuit, evening gown, then that final little walk you guys saw. But again, my dad doesn't know how to edit videos, which again, actually, you know what? I have not apologized for the font on the videos. He filmed this on his iPhone at the time and then lost that iPhone. So this is the only video I have of my first pageant. I hadn't had a walking coach for this pageant or any kind of coach because I was working with Diana Company on this gown. They gave me this blue McDougal gown. One of the dressers decided that she was gonna be my walking coach. And so I was just like, oh, well, I don't need a coach. I already have a coach, the most naive thinking ever. 
not realizing that I'd only had that dress on twice before I had ever stepped on stage. When I found the dress and when I came back for alterations and because of my height, alterations from MacDougall took four months. I found the dress in July. I literally did not pick up the dress until four days before the pageant. So literally the only practice I had was that day I picked up the dress from Diana Company. I went to Barbizon or Red Bank once, maybe like the Thursday before I left and they let me practice on their carpet, but it's carpet and it's completely different. I'm not adding a disclaimer, just saying that's why my walk is so shoddy because I never practice. The only real legitimate practice I had outside of this dress was my Barbizon walking classes. Also, these heels were terrible. I'm gonna go back really quick. So, the not having a walking coach should also explain why my opening pose is like my hands behind my back. Cause I had seen some girls do that at Miss Teen USA in like the couple of Miss Teen USA's I had watched, but I did not, I, I didn't have any practice at all. Looking at it, the walk wasn't that bad, but if you knew what I was thinking internally, you'd realize why I look so stiff and semi-scared in the face. So internally, by the time I got to like the middle of the runway, my dress was slipping. It was literally, I was stepping on my dress at the bottom and pulling it down. And Diane and company had given me this white corset underneath. The more I walked, the more you could start to see that white corset and it was absolutely terrifying. I had no idea how to combat it. I'm not gonna do that on stage. I will say though, I was like slightly obsessed with my weight at this point. I don't look as bad as I thought I did. Maybe I have body dysmorphia and I'm genuinely not making fun of that. I actually think I might have it. <laughs> I, do, I definitely don't look like I'm standing up straight though. And my hands are doing that curve combo. Oh, you guys want to hear a story about swimsuit? So the swimsuit I'm wearing is from Venus and this is why, except for maybe one other swimsuit, I don't buy anything from Venus anymore. The worst thing happened to me where someone else had my exact same McDougal gown in a different shade of color and about 10 to 15 other girls had the same swimsuit. I don't know, but looking back at it now as a judge, I would be annoyed. I would be highly annoyed. Okay, let's just get on with it. So I see something already. Starting off with my hands right here. <laughs> like, I don't pose like this anymore. I have my hands here normally, but starting off here, like, oh no, sweetheart, you don't want to do that. <laughs> I will say, looking at my walk though, the swimsuit was a little tight, but also I've always had a very short torso. And in my head, that leaves me to be a horrible walker because like when I walk, my body looks like this. Like there is no sway, there's no hip sway. So I've been working on that a lot, but watching it here, it's just like, ugh, ugh, cringe. <laughs> These earrings are also from Walmart, by the way. There was a lot of hand swinging. I could see at the end there, I like took a second and I was like, oh, okay, I'm gonna hit my hands on my hip now. Like my hand literally floated in midair as I was getting into that position. I could have done better, but given the circumstances, what more could I have done?
That girl in the white dress with the chiffon that's Ava Tortorisi, she would end up with a Mitsubishi Team USA 2019. And the video cuts off right when I'm about to walk on stage. I totally forgot about that. So that was my first pageant experience at Miss New Jersey Teen USA 2016. Do you remember how earlier in the video, how I said that I wonder if some of my earlier consequences in my first pageant is what often stops me and if people remember that? Now, me bringing it up in a video, it probably isn't the best thing, but I'm gonna do it for the sake of being open and vulnerable. I kind of went into it with my first pageant with a very big head. Again, when you have a extremely large support group like I did. This is the one and only pageant where every single one of my family members was there. Both of my grandmothers were there. One was in a wheelchair. The fact that like she could not stay in cars for more than 30 minutes and we had to get her a wheelchair for the weekend, that was, that touched my heart. Everyone's gassing you up. Everyone's just like, Adia, you're gonna win. Adia, you're gonna win. Adia, you're gonna win. Adia, you're gonna win. Adia, the title's yours. Adia, you're gonna win. Adia, you're gonna win. And it got to my head. It got to my head. And when finals came. The reason why I don't have a video of finals, my dad and my grandmother had to leave and they went back home to Delaware. No one else had the forethought to film finals, but I'm glad that they didn't. I didn't place. My heart shattered. It broke like that into a million pieces. I just broke a perfectly good Ticonderoga pencil. I hope you guys appreciate it. Once I didn't place, I went backstage and I freaking cried. I bawled tears. I, I've i cried like that since, but I had not cried like that ever in my life. Up until last, this time, April of last year, I had not cried like that. It was absolutely heartbreaking and devastating. I felt like I'd let everybody down. I felt like I'd left myself down. It was just, it was heartbreaking but it was such an ugly cry. And again, this is backstage as the pa the finals night is still going on. So normally what they do after finals and you don't make top 15 is they send you to a back room and you guys get to eat pizza or like dinner or like snacks or like candy. And you watch the pageant up until like the top five. Question, I know I've experienced this five times now. <laughs> Literally girls who I don't know are trying to like cheer me up. They're patting me on the back. They're like, it's okay, girl, you're fine. I'm like, no, don't, don't talk to me. I'm like, I'm not saying like, no, don't talk to me. But I'm just like, no, it's not. And I'm like pawing my eyes out. I'm 16 years old. And yeah, this is what they're looking for in a winner. A girl who immediately breaks down into tears after she doesn't get what she wants. So that's why I'm saying that one experience, although it humbled me a heck of a lot, it may have made me look way worse than what I actually intended upon. I don't know why and I don't know how, but I just could not contain my tears for the pillow later that night. Certain like certain times you just can't. And that was like one of those certain times and I deeply regret it. Like Cindy Debbie, if you're watching this, I deeply regret that. I've grown as a person since. It's obviously been four, four or five years since that happened. Haven't cried over a loss <laughs> since then. Uh, but I hadn't realized at the time that the chances of placing just placing alone are very low. You have to give your all. And that year I may have had the monetary backing, but I definitely didn't put it in the physical work. All right, so in 2016, I actually competed in two separate pageants. I competed for the title of Teen Miss of the United States as Teen Miss New Jersey and Miss New Jersey Teen USA. If I have pictures from Teen Miss New Jersey or Teen Miss of the United States, I'll include them down here. Um, Team Miss United States for that year was actually Alyssa Cleansing, who was Miss Kansas USA 2019. I didn't place. That one kind of stung, but it was one of those, again, situations where I signed up for the title in May. I didn't give a hoot or a holler about money or preparing until June. And I think the pageant, or like July, and the pageant was in August. So this pageant is actually where I won my first uh, non finalist award. I won the non-finalist interview award. It was a pretty good feeling. And I actually, there are so many judges that I still try to keep in contact with from that judging panel. It was John A. Morris and Shantae Hinton, Miss USA 2002, and Stephanie McGrain from the Pageant Planet. She worked at the Pageant Planet at the time. I don't remember the questions that were asked to me on the interview. The only thing I remember though, is my heel was about to get stuck, was stuck on the chair. This was after preliminaries. And in preliminaries, I had actually had my my first ever like trip wobble ever and 
<laughs> I wish I had the video. When my heels were hits was stuck on my chair. Shantae Hinton was in the middle and she's just like, oh baby girl, watch out, like your shoes about to get hooked. And I was just I carefully stood my foot out and I was like, oh it's alright, I've been tripping all weekend long. <laughs> And they all laughed. From that moment on, I kind of realized that comedy and making the judges laugh is the best way to connect with them. And so I always kept that in the back of my head. And that was validated when I won the Teen Interview Award. So moving on to Miss New Jersey Teen USA 2016. This year, I decided to take that same yellow dress at war I wore at Teen Miss of the United States and I decided to alter it. After the fiasco of the weave and how big that hair looked, I decided to go natural this year. All right, let's watch. This is a video of me going to the Hilton Persephone this year. So 2016 was actually a major year for me in my modeling career. So I ended up getting on the cover of two separate magazines. Uh, the first one was Green Life NJ, and then the second one was Asbury Park Zest. And so these two magazines combined kind of like boosted my confidence a little bit. Um, even in, now the winter one came after the pageant, but I had gotten my own little spread in this magazine. This was like my first year and not my last <laughs> where I didn't have much time to, comp to get ready to compete for Miss New Jersey Team USA. I had decided very much so last minute to compete. Last minute at that time. I've I've competed with less, or I've decided to compete with less time soon. After Teen Miss Earth United States was over, I didn't decide to compete at Miss New Jersey Teen USA until October, and the pageant was in November. With only a month, I had to come up with a thousand two hundred fifty dollars, like everyone else. I had a GoFundMe page. I believe that raised about four or five hundred dollars, and. For the life of me, I cannot remember how I raised the rest of that money. Either Carol Still Stillwell helped me, or I summoned uh, a demon baby. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know which one it was. <laughs> well, the world will never know. <laughs> yeah, but I ended up making it through having these two new contacts. And by the way, I do want to say thank you to Vanessa and Ariko. Like, even what she's doing for the community of Asbury Park in posting these magazines is it's huge and astonishing. And I still am very thankful for these two. So the makeup artist who ended up doing my makeup here, Nina from The Perfect Faces by Nina at Salon L in Allenhurst, New Jersey. She ended up doing my makeup for interview. I'll do a part two to this video of my pageant experience because one, it's 2.30 in the morning here in New Jersey. So you guys are gonna go along with me on this journey. Yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Like I said, this is only the beginning of my pageant journey. There's still two three more years to go of the story so come back part two all right sayonara